Hi, this is Peter Clayton. We are at MREC, uh, the mobile recruiting conference here in Atlanta, Georgia at the uh, Georgia Tech uh, Conference Center. And I'm with two very interesting people from a uh, company you've probably heard of, LinkedIn. Leela, could you introduce yourself, please? Of course, Peter. My name is Leela Shonavasan, and I'm the group marketing manager for our LinkedIn Talent Solutions team. Now you know why I asked her to introduce herself. Okay, and uh, could you introduce yourself, please? Sure, Peter, it's Rob Humphrey. I uh, work on strategic initiatives and talent solutions at LinkedIn. Great, and um, again, uh, these two led a very interesting session here this morning, and you started out with a, a moment of silence for? For the QR code, and in the recruiting context specifically. And why is that? Well, so I came to MREC last year and there was a lot of discussion around QR codes as being something on the cutting edge and a lot of organizations talking about how to use QR codes as part of their recruiting strategy. This year, not so much. Uh, there was actually a session yesterday, I believe, where the death knell was was uh, was rung for the QR code. And so we thought this is a fun way to, <laughs> to really um, make the point that the technology is always evolving in this space. Technologies come, technologies go. Our presentation was really about what do you need to do to nail recruiting, whether it's on or off mobile device, frankly, but in that mobile context, what are the things that you need to do to facilitate that really strong candidate experience and mobile recruiting strategy? You know, I have a QR code on my business card. I don't think anybody has ever scanned it ever once, right? <laughs> All right, so um, one of the interesting things that you guys were both talking about were the statistics that LinkedIn is gathering about specifically the use of mobile devices um, and the growth and the adoption of mobile devices. So Rob, can you talk to us a little bit about the growth curve and, and uh, you, especially in the, in the UK and the US? Yeah, it's been quite significant. I mean, we have some 33% of all our users uh, access LinkedIn services via mobile devices. And uh, we're, we're finding from a recruiting perspective, actually, that bodes well for a lot of the strategies that people are putting together. And apparently in the UK, they're actually a little bit ahead of us in terms of adoption, particularly on the tablet. And um, at a session yesterday, um, Ed Newman was from iMomentus was talking about the adoption, especially of Fortune 500 companies uh, with mobile uh, you know, optimized apps, and it's miserable. Why is that? Well, and we, we saw this in our survey too for apps specifically. I think only 9% of the uh, smartphone users that we, that we surveyed said that they'd actually downloaded a company-specific career app, and it was a little bit higher on tablet, only 14%. But the reality is what they're doing instead is they're going to professional social networks and other places of, that are points of aggregation where they can learn about careers from multiple companies rather than going to a single point, basically. And so uh, if I were a Fortune 500 company, I wouldn't be developing an app either, necessarily. But I'd be thinking about how um, to mobile optimize my career site, certainly, um, but then also where else am I showing up online and how does that experience feel on a mobile device? Yeah, something else that we got into a pretty good discussion with today was you know, this whole controversy about how easy should you make it for people to apply. You know, the, the one push apply through LinkedIn, for instance. And the, the controversy being, well, if you make it too easy, then you're going to just get flooded with resumes from everybody like the old days of Monster, right? So what, what kind of statistics and what have you seen at LinkedIn, uh, especially regarding easy apply? I think it depends on who you're talking about. Um, people want it to be easy to apply. I mean, let's apply common sense, not statistics. If you go to Target, how long do you want to wait in line to buy your milk and socks? That's really what it equates to. Okay, so two people here from LinkedIn. Uh, I think anybody who listens to my podcast and watch my videos certainly has a professional profile up on LinkedIn. What kind of tips and advice can you share with us uh, regarding you know, your personal profile on LinkedIn? What kinds of things should people be doing? Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to be thinking about that profile as their own professional real estate that's really an articulation of who they are as a professional and increasingly who their, what their organization is as, a, as an employer. So, uh, you know, of all the activities that take place on LinkedIn, looking at profiles, of course, is one of the most common things. And so we're really encouraging people to embrace that opportunity. And these days on your profile, it's not only about the text and making your personality and your, your, your corporate culture shine through, it's about taking advantage of things like rich media in that profile context so that you can really bring that to life in a new and interesting way, especially on a mobile device. Um, you shared uh, an uh, an outreach from your 
LinkedIn profile where someone was trying to connect with you who knew you maybe 15 years ago. <laughs> and and, and th this all leads up to some very, very good advice that you shared on you know how you should go about connecting with people and the, the length of messages that you should be sharing and, and when you link, you know reach out on people, especially on LinkedIn or through email. Yeah. I think it applies anywhere that you're getting an email, particularly when you're getting something in a mobile device. Keep it under 250 characters. And uh, for all intents and purposes, make sure you have a picture on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, it really changes the game for you. 250 carriers, keep it short, keep it concise, make me want to read it. Great. Any uh, specific advice you'd like to share, Leila? Sure. As a content marketer, of course, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And I would say that in addition to everything that Rob said, look at things as simple as the, the length of your sentences and your paragraph structure, because big blocks of text don't tend to work so well online or on the mobile device. So these are the types of things that recruiters may not be thinking about as they put together their messages. But uh, I think the, answer, the, the, the recommendation from us is to look at your templates and see what you're actually sending out there. You know, when I've uh, been uh, interviewing uh, content developers and web developers over the last year, uh, their advice always has been develop for mobile first. Would you agree with that approach? I would agree with that. It, it, it's actually a great practice. I think everyone should follow that. How about you? Yeah, I think it's very much in keeping with uh, our mantra of simplification. People are looking for simpler experiences, and that's actually more challenging as a content uh, producer is to boil it down to the essence and what really matters. But yeah, I think simplification works well, whether you're on desktop or mobile. Well, yeah, one of the interesting things that's been talked about at this conference is just the speed of adoption. I mean, this conference is in its third year. When this conference started three years ago, the iPad didn't exist. So, you know, think about that for a minute. I mean, that's just an, an amazing statistic. And now, you know, tablets are taking over the world. Yeah, they sure are. I mean, at, 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 at any venue, especially this one, uh, a mobile recruiting conference, I mean, you've got people with multiple devices actually uh, enjoying the conversation and discussion and doing other things. What they're doing, I'm not sure, but um, they're doing things. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly pervasive. And um, what, uh, what particular advice can you share with us for, for companies who are, you know, uh, really trying to elevate their presence and, and you know, their profile on LinkedIn? To elevate your presence on your profile on LinkedIn, uh, I'd say the first thing to do is take a look at all of the free stuff, right? Because there, there is so much that companies can accomplish today in our platform to really help them uh, set the right tone with, with potential candidates to um, bring color to what it's like to work at that organization. Talent brand is everything basically in this day and age. So first off, make sure that your company page says what you want it to say. Um, increasingly, we're also seeing the savviest employers look at their employee base as uh, basically another set of nodes for candidates to explore life at that company and, and opportunities to work. And so it's no longer just about making sure that career, uh, that sorry, that recruiting profiles are optimized on LinkedIn. It's about looking across your entire employee base and making sure that those profiles, uh, while still staying, staying authentic and being all about that candidate's experience or that, that employer's, employee's experience, uh, really um, do strike a chord with, with the audience. So I'd say look at your profiles, look at basics like your company page, and then also talk, I mean, talk to us frankly. We work with thousands of organizations and we're willing to help you think about how to put your best foot forward on our platform. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today here on Total Picture Radio. One last question. Uh, I know that you have a rather large conference coming up in Las Vegas. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So uh, Talent Connect is, uh, this will be our fourth annual conference. And this year we're expecting about 2,500 talent acquisition professionals from all around the world to descend on Vegas for two and a half day days of idea sharing and information. And I think the reason that we've seen this conference scale from about 500 folks back in 2010 is that we make this very much for customers and by customers. So we have 100 different talent acquisition leaders who are scheduled to speak on all manner of talent acquisition related topics, everything from uh, you know basics of sourcing through mobile, through talent brand and so on and so forth. There's just lots of information sharing, lots of great networking and it's truly an extraordinary event. Can't wait. Yeah, it is an extraordinary event, and I've heard that from John Sumzer and Jerry Crispin, so <laughs> that's a pretty good recommendation. Again, thank you very much for speaking with me here.